Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Omar Awad. I'm a physician and public health contributor for Forbes.com. I want to do a Q&A and talk about the new updated COVID vaccine. I've gotten tons of questions from family and friends about this vaccine. So I thought, why not and just do a quick 10 Q&A on the most important questions regarding the COVID uh, updated vaccine. So, and I wrote these down. So I'm just going to read off these questions that I asked. So number one, why do we call it an updated COVID vaccine? Well, COVID is not going anywhere, right? So it's been around for, you know, three, four years. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's treated now essentially like the flu. So just like we don't call the new flu vaccine a booster, we also now really don't call this COVID updated vaccine a booster anymore because it provides immunity. It provides new immunity towards the most common dominant strains that exist here in America. So you may hear the term booster, but really the better term is the updated COVID vaccine. The second question, why is it monovalent? Well, monovalent is exactly like its name depicts. Mono for one, valent for the strain, right? So it fights against one specific strain, and that is the Omicron subvary XBB 1.5. If you remember, you know, last year, two years ago, there was a bivalent vaccine, and that fought against two strains, right? The original strain that was isolated in Wuhan, China in 2019, and the Omicron subvariant strains, right? So that's why it was a bivalent strain. But this one really is a monovalent strain fighting against the Omicron XBB 1.5 subvariant. That's why it's known as a monovalent updated vaccine. Number three, does it protect against new COVID strains? Well, yes, it protects against the more dominant strains that we see here in America right now, which include EG5, FL151. These are all intimately related to the Omicron XBB 1.5. So yes, it fights against the most common strains that we're seeing here in America. And so do you may wonder, well, does it fight against the BA286, that highly mutant strain? And the good news is that it seems to be good against that as well. Even though the BA286 is genetically different than the Omicron XB uh, 1.5, right? XBB 1.5, it's, uh, it's still considered to be effective. And according to CDC data and CDC studies, it's supposed to be effective against this new highly mutant variant. Number four, who should get this? Well, the CDC recommends that everyone aged six months and older should get this vaccine. Okay, so it's really recommended for everyone if you're six months and above. Now, obviously, if you're above 65 years of age, you're immunocompromised, you have some underlying medical conditions like chronic lung disease, heart disease, diabetes, uh, you should absolutely definitely get this vaccine and not wait. And all of us really should try and get this vaccine if possible because it prevents against serious illness, hospitalizations, and deaths. Now, obviously, COVID cases are on the rise. There have been more hospitalizations. Obviously, they don't compare to what we saw in the last peak last year or the year before. But still, people are going to the hospital. People are dying. So really important for all of us to get it if you're able to do so. And the CDC has recommended that all those that are aged six months and older get this vaccine new updated vaccine. And number five, why should kids consider getting this? Well, this is an interesting question because, you know, kids don't have a high, as high of a risk of getting serious illness, hospitalization, and death compared to those that are 65 years and older. And those that are zero to six months do, but the vaccine is not recommended for them. So why should a three-year-old or four-year-old get this vaccine? Well, it's probably not as urgent for them to get it. But with that said, it is important because then this, if you get the vaccine, then you're preventing potentially spreading it to other people like elderly individuals or those who are immunocompromised who can't fight off infection by themselves because their immune, immune system is compromised or they're not able to use it as effectively. So that's one reason. The other reason is that it can prevent kids from being absent from school. So if you don't get the vaccine, you have COVID, then you could potentially spread it to another kid and they may get sick for whatever reason. And this results in schools, you know, having people out of school, potentially having to shut down some schools that we had to do, you know, in previous years. So, you know, really there are many important reasons for even kids to get the vaccine, even though they're not nearly as high to risk as some adults. And obviously those that are, you know, less than six months, years of age. Number six, what should you do if you had a recent infection with COVID or you got a booster pretty recently? Well, if you've gotten the booster, 
within the last two months and you're probably okay, but you should wait about two months if you've gotten a previous booster and then get this vaccine. If you've had a recent COVID infection, I would wait at least about three months. That's what experts are saying. Public health experts are saying you should wait about at least three months, maybe up to three to six months, and then get this vaccine to provide, you know, the maximum amount of immunity and antibodies to fight off, you know, the COVID strains that we're seeing currently. Number seven, what are side effects of the vaccine? The side effects for this updated vaccine are no different than the side effects from previous vaccines that we're talking about. The most common ones would be like a low grade fever, pain in the injection site, uh, you know, muscle aches, cramps, nothing severe, nothing dramatic overall. It's a really well tolerated vaccine uh, that should result in very minimal side effects. Number eight, can you get the flu and COVID vaccines at the same time? So absolutely, right? So in fact, you probably should because the, you're at risk if you do them at different times, you may not follow up and get the vaccine, right? So, you know, the flu shot is recommended for most people uh, yearly, especially for elderly and healthcare workers. COVID vaccine is recommended. You might as well get them together if you qualify for both. So there's no harm or risk in getting them um, at the same time. But what about RSV? Can you get the RSV and the COVID vaccine at the same time? Some experts are saying that you should not, but really it's because we don't have data that shows one way or the other if it's effective. So my sense is, is that you probably could, and a lot of experts think that you could get it at the same time. It's probably no problem whatsoever, but if you want to wait, that's totally fine. But remember that RSV isn't necessarily needed for everyone, right? So if you're 60 years of age and older, then you probably should get the RSV, especially if you're at high risk when you have a chronic lung disease, a chronic heart disease, diabetes, you're immunocompromised, or obviously if you're really young, you know, RSV affects young individuals, young people. If you're a two-year-old or a one-year-old, you may consider getting both of them at the same time. But you can also wait if you want to, because we just don't have the data to show one way or the other. And then finally, number 10, is the vaccine paid for? Well, if you have insurance, the good news is this, absolutely, it's paid for. No worries. You can get it free of charge. Even if you're uninsured, well, there's 25 to 30 million Americans that are uninsured. So are they going to have to pay for it? Well, there's a, you know, there's a bridge access program that allows you to get the vaccine for free until the end of 2024. So you may not be able to get it immediately, but I think within a few weeks, you'll be able to get this vaccine free of charge. So no worries whatsoever. Uh, there's still many ways and opportunities to get the vaccine for free. Uh, so absolutely, uh, there's no excuse really to not get vaccinated from COVID. So uh, hope these questions were helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, the MedEd page. Please like this video. And as always, please be kind to yourself and to those around you.